Hello and welcome to the Minimum Competence episode for Monday, November 13th, 2023. I'm your host for today, Andrew Leahy, a tax and technology attorney from New Jersey. In today's episode, we have a Fortnite choreography suit revived. Revenue rules are a hassle, but no changes are coming. Trump wants TV cameras in the courtroom and the California bar passage rate takes a downturn. Let's remember, life is 10% what you do and 90% waiting online to do it, so savor the lines, but also read today's legal news. This day in legal history, November 13th, 1956, marked a significant moment in the American civil rights movement. The U.S. Supreme Court, in a decisive action, upheld the ruling of the U.S. District Court in the case of Browder v. Gale. This landmark decision affirmed that the segregation practices on Montgomery, Alabama's public buses were unconstitutional, effectively dismantling the legal basis for bus segregation in the state. The origins of Browder v. Gale can be traced to the district court, where the case was argued on April 24, 1956, and a decision was issued on June 5, 1956. This case, brought against the mayor of Montgomery, W.A. Gale, challenged the constitutionality of Alabama's bus segregation laws. The U.S. Supreme Court's refusal to review the case allowed the district court's judgment to stand, thus legally ending segregation on public buses in Montgomery. The Supreme Court decision resonated beyond the courtroom. On the day of the ruling, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a key figure in the Montgomery bus boycott and the broader civil rights movement, was in court for a trial concerning the legality of the boycott's carpools. It was during this trial that he received news of the Supreme Court's affirmation of the district court's decision. Moreover, the decision held that bus segregation violated the due process and equal protection clauses of the 14th Amendment. This ruling was a significant step forward in the fight against racial segregation and discrimination in the United States. It not only supported the legal argument against segregated buses, but also played a crucial role in the successful conclusion of the Montgomery bus boycott on December 20th, 1956. The impact of the Browder v. Gale decision extended to prominent figures of the civil rights movement, including Rosa Parks, who was en route to Albany, New York, to speak when she heard the news. Her reaction to this landmark ruling was noted on the back of a program indicating the profound significance of this moment in the struggle for civil rights. In summary, November 13, 1956 stands as a monumental date in legal history, symbolizing a major victory in the fight against racial segregation and marking a turning point in the American civil rights movement. In a significant development in copyright law, choreographer Kyle Hanagami has successfully appealed a lower court decision in the Ninth Circuit. His lawsuit against Epic Games Inc. claims that the It's Complicated Dance move in Fortnite video games copied choreography from a music video. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit ruled that the lower court erred in dismissing the sequence as eight unprotectable, quote, poses, stating that the two-second sequence was more complex than other short dance steps and could be copyrightable. The case is notable for setting new circuit law, suggesting that the brevity of a dance sequence does not automatically disqualify it from copyright protection. The ruling acknowledges the complexities in choreography and challenges the traditional view that short dance sequences are not protectable. This opens new doors for choreographers to press copyright claims for short bursts of infringement, a significant development considering the rise of short dance moves in popular culture, including viral TikTok videos and Fortnite emotes. Several lawsuits against Epic Games over Fortnite emotes have been previously dropped, including those by musician 2 Millie and actor Alfonso Ribeiro. However, Hanagami, having successfully registered a copyright for his choreography, brought his lawsuit in 2022, which the lower court dismissed. The Ninth Circuit's decision emphasizes the importance of considering all elements of a dance sequence, such as body position, transitions, and use of space in copyright analysis. It also rejects the notion that the length of the copied material is the sole factor in determining its protectability. The court noted that Hanagami's sequence, which appeared four times in the full routine, was the most recognizable and distinctive part, potentially falling in the middle of a continuum between copyrightable choreography and uncopyrightable dance. This ruling has wider implications for the video game industry, particularly in how game companies incorporate dance moves. The direct link between selling emotes in Fortnite and the choreographer's work could affect claims of de minimis use and establish monetary awards. The case also raises questions about the protection of individual dance moves and their integration into larger routines. The Ninth Circuit's reversal of the lower court's approach to choreography represents a significant change in how dance is treated under copyright law. The case, Kyle Hanagami v. Epic Games Inc., is seen as a milestone for choreography's recognition in copyright law, potentially shaping future legal boundaries in this area. The Financial Accounting Standards Board, or FASB, recently conducted a postmortem of its significant revenue recognition accounting standard, ASC 606, to evaluate potential needs for tweaks or clarifications nearly a decade after its publication. This standard, effective for publicly traded companies since 2018 and private companies since 2021, aimed to unify revenue recording practices across industries. 
However, despite its strengths in reducing complexity and providing a universal set of rules, particularly beneficial for multinational corporations, the standard has also presented challenges. One of the major difficulties identified is the requirement for judgment calls in certain scenarios, leading to uncertainties and often necessitating consultations with the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC. Companies, especially, are seeking clearer guidance on differentiating between being a principal or a primary supplier and an agent or an arranger of sales in transactions, a distinction that becomes particularly complex in multi-party and app-based transactions. The big four accounting firms have produced extensive technical guides to address these complexities, but there's concern that these guides might be becoming de facto rules potentially overshadowing the official GAAP standards. The situation highlights the nuanced challenges companies face in applying these standards in varied and evolving business contexts. Investors and analysts are also calling for more robust disclosures to gain better insight into key decisions and judgments made by companies under this standard. They express a need for more detailed breakdowns of revenue by type and amount and clearer information on costs related to fulfilling customer contracts. FASB plans to review the feedback in 2024 and consider potential updates ranging from adding illustrative examples to introducing new disclosure requirements. The overarching goal is to address the challenges posed by the complexity of transactions and the nuances of the standard itself, as acknowledged by FASB Chair Rich Jones. Former U.S. President Donald Trump, you remember him? Currently a leading Republican candidate for the 2024 presidential nomination, has expressed support for televising his upcoming federal trial. Trump, facing charges related to his attempts to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election, filed a legal motion endorsing media requests for live TV coverage of the trial. The trial, set for March, involves charges of attempting to defraud the federal government and obstructing Congress, particularly in relation to his unsubstantiated claims of election fraud that incited the January 6, 2021 U.S. Capitol riot. In his motion, filed by lawyers John Lauro and Todd Blanche, Trump argues that the trial should be publicly broadcast to allow Americans to witness his defense against what he deems baseless and politically motivated charges. He accuses the Biden administration of attempting to conduct the trial in darkness and alleges that special prosecutor Jack Smith's team is violating his constitutional rights. Trump's filing also criticizes U.S. District Judge Tanya Shutkin for allegedly prioritizing political opposition over legal protections. Smith, on the other hand, has opposed the media request for TV coverage, citing a longstanding federal court rule that prohibits broadcasting criminal proceedings. Smith's concerns include the potential intimidation of witnesses and jurors by the televised coverage. As of now, it remains uncertain whether Judge Shutkin will permit live television coverage of the trial, which is attracting significant public and media attention. The July 2023 bar exam results revealed a slight decrease in California's overall pass rate, contrasting with the upward trend observed in most other states. Out of the 7,555 candidates who sat for the California bar exam in July 2023, 51.5% passed, a small drop from the previous year's 52.4% pass rate. Notably, first-time examinees in California saw an increase in pass rates, reaching nearly 65%, up from 62% in the previous year. California, which had the second-largest number of examinees after New York, was the last state to report its results for this cycle. Across the United States, 32 states reported increases in their July bar exam pass rates, while 11 states experienced decreases, and 7 states had unchanged pass rates compared to July of 2022. Despite concerns that examinees who began law school during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic might underperform, many exceeded expectations. Among the largest bar exam jurisdictions, results varied significantly. Florida saw a substantial increase of 10 percentage points in its pass rate, reaching 61%, and Texas's pass rate rose by 4 percentage points to 71%. However, New York's pass rate remained steady at 66%. Wyoming experienced the largest year-over-year increase, with its pass rate jumping 25 percentage points to 80%, albeit with a small cohort of 49 examinees. West Virginia also saw a significant increase with its pass rate rising by 15 percentage points to 72%. In contrast, Michigan reported the most substantial decline, with its pass rate dropping from 66% in July of 2022 to 55% this year. Looking ahead, the bar exam is undergoing changes. Starting in July of 2026, some states will introduce the next-gen bar exam, which focuses more on legal skills and less on law memorization, and will be three hours shorter. Maryland, Missouri, and Oregon have already committed to administering this new format when it debuts. Until July of 2028, states will have the option to use either the existing test or the next-gen exam, after which only the next-gen exam will be available. And with that, I thank you so much for listening to Minimum Competence, your daily news podcast for lawyers. If you're looking for more than Minimum Competence, links to further reading on all the topics touched on today are in the show notes. If you have any questions or story suggestions, you can find us on Mastodon on the esq.social instance. I'm at Andrew, and my co-host Gina is at Gina. Reviews go a long way towards helping new listeners to find our show. If you have a moment and can leave a rating or review on your podcast player, we'd sure appreciate it. 
And if you know someone that might be interested in a story we cover, consider sending them the episode. Minimum Competence is available at minimumcomp.com and wherever you get your finely crafted podcasts. If you haven't checked out the website in a while, give it a look. There are complete transcripts and resources for each episode and its corresponding segments, as well as an opportunity to receive new episodes in email newsletter form. All of the links to stories we cover will also be available on links.esq.social, which is our link aggregator in the Fediverse. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And until then, remember, you're never too old to set a new goal unless that goal is to become a child prodigy. 